It's better to be healthy alone than sick with someone else. Dr. Phil. Welcome, and I'm so glad that you're here. Here we talk about personal development, relationships, and mental health, just to name a few. My name is Carmen, a registered counsellor who is passionate about coming alongside people. This podcast is designed to create a discussion and bring awareness around what matters most in life, and that includes you. The goal is that each episode will leave you feeling encouraged, equipped, and empowered so you can live your best life. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode. How are you? It's been an exciting couple of weeks on this end. I've had the great honour of working alongside some great people who are diligent in bringing value to their sphere. So in case you missed it, I was a guest on the Motivation Without the Hype podcast where the host Jez Perez from Jez Perez Thrive asked me a set of questions around enabling change and I will include the link in this episode show notes if you would like to listen in. I also had a great time on Sunday with Shireen and the ladies from Crave Fitness where we unpacked the topic of toxic relationships which, by the way, is the inspiration for this week's episode. Before we get into it, I just wanted to make a shout out to both Jez and Shireen, and I appreciate the work that you both do and your heart to empower your communities. So thanks for allowing me to be a part of the journey. So in this week's episode, we look at toxic relationships. And while the topic can be broad, And there is no way we could cover it all in one episode, as with most topics. However, the idea is to introduce you to topics. And then if it's an area of interest, you might like to expand your knowledge and do your research. So what are toxic relationships? Do we always have the language to define them? Does culture, society, family of origin values and our way of being in the world influence this? Perhaps it's safe to answer this question with a yes. To establish what a toxic relationship looks like, suppose we need to look at both ends of the scale and by looking at what functioning relationships can also look like. I have used the power and control wheel and the equality wheel to do this. These resources can be found by doing a Google search if you want to look for yourself and become familiar with them. Traits of a relationship based on power and control can look like using intimidation, putting someone down and making them feel bad about themselves. Name-calling, mind games, humiliation, trying to make the other person feel guilty controlling what the other person does and who they talk to, using jealousy to justify actions, minimising, denying and blaming, shifting responsibility for abusive or toxic behaviour and not taking someone's concern seriously, just to name a few. A relationship built on equality can look like negotiation and fairness, open communication, being understanding and the valuing of opinions even if they may be different, supporting each other's goals in life, respecting each other's feelings, accepting responsibility for self, admitting being wrong when necessary and working as a team and the list goes on. So now we've defined what toxic relationships can look like. Why do we stay in toxic relationships? According to psychology today, there are some reasons why we do. And while the following points are regarding romantic relationships, they can also be transferable to other relationships. Point number one, being satisfied with unsatisfactory relationships. In recent research, 
exploring women's decisions about whether to stay or leave their relationships. The single most important determinant of women's decisions to remain in their relationship was relationship satisfaction. How can we be satisfied with unsatisfactory relationships? Things to consider are low self-esteem or seeing self to be less attractive. Have low comparison levels, which can be thought of as standards or exceptions from a relationship. If we have low comparison levels, we won't expect many benefits from the relationship. We may maintain a bad relationship because our low expectations are being met. If we have low self-esteem, we are more likely to become involved in relationships that are of shorter duration and experience further declines in self-esteem when the relationship ends. The same can be with women who experienced abuse as children report more satisfaction with lower quality relationships. Point number two, a shift in priorities. Common mechanisms that can help maintain our relationships are partner enhancements and positive illusions, which basically means we see our romantic partners through positive lenses, which is sometimes unrealistic. When our partner reveals negative characteristics, we may downgrade the importance of those characteristics and upgrade the importance of the positive traits our mates do possess. And the third and last point, you can love someone and choose not to be in the relationship. Psychologists distinguish among three different components of attitudes, which are thoughts, feelings, and behavior or actions. These components are frequently not aligned with one another. An example is in the case of a bad relationship. Your thoughts may be telling you that your partner is not suitable for you, but your feelings may still be positive. We may continue to love our partners even though we consciously recognize that we are involved in destructive relationships. It is also possible that strong positive and negative feelings towards a partner may coexist. If you would like to read more on this, I will include the article in this episode's show notes. So on a finishing note, relationships can be complex. And if you are in a toxic or abusive relationship, it may be helpful to seek support from your friends, family members, or specialised support. Let this information empower you to make choices that move you towards what's safe for you and your well-being. In the meantime, take care and wishing you a great week ahead. Bye for now. So that's it for today's episode. As always, I'm grateful for the opportunity to come alongside you. If you know someone who might benefit from hearing this episode, why not share it with them? And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss an episode. For more content or to learn about the services I provide, head over to carmendebono.com.au and I look forward to coming alongside you again next Wednesday.